All right. All right. New day, new project. <laughs> Indeed. So here we have the infamy miniatures uh, Rocketeer. Yes. With his hat. With his hat. Yeah. I'll leave the hat off for now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have a very filigree model here. Yeah. Um, you can see all kind of uh, details at the moment. It's a little hard to <laughs> see because it's all black. Yeah. Um, but as you back this in the wonderful Infamy Big Smoke campaign, you uh, have the model in your hand. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you can see especially all the details on the armor and um, also on the, the jump pack. Yeah, uh, I really like the jump pack a lot. Yeah. yeah. Those are quite uh, outstanding and I think um, we will also focus on how to paint elements like that uh, in a nice non-metal uh, non -metal setting. Mm -hmm. um, we won't paint all of the infamy figures in non-metal, we will have a variation between real metal and non-metal uh, to also show both techniques. Yeah. Um, but this here with that kind of armor uh, I think should look really good in non-metal. Yeah. Now, you've uh, base coated this black. Yes. And uh, there's, of course, a reason for that. Yeah. Um, I decided to go for black this time. Um, because for non-metal, it's a very nice start because you have the maximum contrast and you don't have to correct all these little shadows. We will keep some of the black as a shadow color and um, yeah, get a nice, clean look with that. Mm -hmm. Are we going to seal a lot of loaded brush action on this miniature with the black? Um, or is it too small to actually use it? Yeah, we will see some loaded brush, mm -hmm. but uh, it's as it's quite small, I think it will be a back and forth pro process. Okay, so um, yeah, and if you've never heard of loaded brush uh, before because you're not an Academy member and you haven't heard that term, um, and this is the first time we'll talk about it and explain it a little more when it happens. Um, now, the last thing you have painted was the shield maiden from Nuts Planet, the Lagerta. <laughs> and uh, this face is about uh, 5,000 times smaller <laughs> than hers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a huge, uh, huge gap between uh, the, uh, I think it's a 1 to 10 scale yeah. bust yeah. and uh, this model here, especially the face uh, and uh, the hand, also uh, his, his uh, sword. They are um, really tiny. They're even uh, smaller than you would usually have them on a, for example, on a Games Workshop miniature. Yeah. So yeah, it <laughs> will be interesting to see how how fine my brush control is after uh, painting a lot of large scale. Uh, <laughs> I think just the shield by its diameter is probably about three times as big as the whole miniature, isn't it? Yeah. At least. At least yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be a nice contrast. So that's the first contrast we have already. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's your what's your plan of attack? How how do you want to start? Mm, I will start with um, mixing up a small gradient of uh, the colors we will use for the uh, the breast piece here. Okay, so we'll start um, with that, and we'll um, start with a uh, dark darker uh, yellow ochre tone um, mixed from. Japanese uniform for model color and some black. Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing that is important is the that you choose um, one uh, light source or one direction of light <coughs> and paint that. Um, consistent on the whole model. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would look pretty good to have the light a little bit more from uh, the, the left side. Mm -hmm. So um, it will be caught more here, also here on that side of the glasses um, and more on that side of the the figure. Yeah. Um, there are two reasons for that. Uh, I think it's uh, quite nice if the miniature is actually looking in the direction of the light and it's quite a, um, hard to reach the element here behind the hand, so yeah. it's kind of an advantage to keep that more or less in the shadow. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I'll start with the medium tone here from the from the palette. Um, 
So yeah, taking the Japanese uniform uh, in combination with black will turn out a little bit greenish. Yeah. Um, but actually that is quite nice because it will give you a nice cooler uh, gold look. Mm -hmm. So just to the side, to one side and white to the tip of the brush with having the base color in the back of the brush. That is the mentioned loaded brush. And yeah. So, um, and, and again, I think there's going to be a lot of people uh, watching this video that uh, may not even have heard of, well, you hopefully you have heard of Painting Buddha, but uh, not of the Painting Buddha Academy. Uh, and I will try to um, explain a little bit more detail some of the things that Ben is doing and that we kind of take for granted sometimes in, in our own videos. Uh, and hopefully that uh, that helps you a lot. So uh, I think uh, while Ben keeps doing this and we'll show you some other examples and other parts uh, as well, um, I'm going to say two things. First of all, non-metallic metal. Um, so there's basically two ways of painting metal. One is using uh, paints with uh, metal pigments that are that look like metal basically it's called true metal and then here we have um, uh, we are simulating the effects on metal um, which basically means the the reflections uh, on metal uh, in a non-metallic style uh, that means we're using paint that is uh, has no metal pigments and um, that's the first thing uh, and as Ben said um, choosing a direction of light is is very important um, because um, if you imagine you have a spoon out of, made out of metal and you turn it in the light, the light will actually wander over the surface. Uh, that is the same is true for true metal paints. Now, non-metallic paints don't do that, so you'll actually have to uh, decide where you want that reflection, and the reflection will then not wander as you turn the miniature. So that's that's the biggest difference there. Uh, and then the second thing uh, that uh, Ben already has mentioned is the uh, loaded brush technique. Um, I always say patented by uh, by Ben, which is not true. I think <laughs> uh, other artists uh, probably have used this before. But um, um, Ben is a very fast painter, um, and he's using um, a lot of techniques uh, and he's acquired basically a lot of techniques that make life easy for him himself. Um, and the loaded brush technique uh, and uh, wet wet blending are two techniques that he's using a lot. Now, loaded brush means you have two paints in the brush. The first one is uh, what, what he calls the base color. Uh, it's basically loaded in the brush, uh, like now, is it? Yeah. And then uh, um, a very, very tiny amount of, uh, even tiny amount, yeah, of, uh, in this case, the highlight color white in the tip of the brush. And as he places the white, uh, at some point the white will be gone. Uh, and then the brush will just start painting um, the um, Japanese uniform. And in doing so, it actually creates a transition automatically. So there's no blending involved or anything like that. Um, so yeah, you can see it's a little bit lighter here in the middle where it ha yeah. started with the white. Um, and then a little darker to the sides. I will increase that with uh, just a tiny bit of white in the clean brush. And the green, just the green brush, pulling it a bit to the side. Yeah. Okay, and some of the base color because it turned out a little bit too broad. Mm hmm. And you can see, I mean, of course, these surfaces are really tiny um, and uh, creating something that looks like a completely smooth blending, uh, well, it is a completely smooth blending, <laughs> um, doesn't require 25 steps going back and forth um, when you're doing, the, doing this uh, kind of technique. Um, the biggest, I think that the two biggest uh, challenges with this technique, first of all, is it's probably new for most of you. Uh, it requires some practice. Um, the amount of the, of the tip color is something you really have to judge by the surface you're, uh, you're painting. Um, 
And the consistency of the paint is uh, something that's very important in the brush. Maybe Ben can say something about that. Yeah, it's quite important that you first of all really try to understand the um, the consistency of the paints that that you're using. A lot of people just uh, more or less uh, with with more or less care uh, think about their consistencies. Um, for the loaded brush, it's quite important that the paint in the lower uh, part, uh, in, the in the back of the brush, is thinner. Um, you don't need to, to cover the whole surface in, in, in one go, especially when you work in small areas like that. <coughs> so, um, the larger the areas uh, get, the more important it is to actually have a, uh, a base color underneath that mm -hmm. before. Um, so you don't see the color differences too too strong as you you would see it now with the black, but as these surfaces are that small, we can just work uh, with a rather thin coat. You can see, uh, I can try that here and just show it on my fingernail. So that is the consistency. When we say consistency, that means basically thickness or level of dilution. Um, and this is um, um, kind of a, what we call a, a layer consistency. Uh, there's basically three major types that we're talking about. One is glazes, which is much thinner than what you've just seen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still... It's still thin, yeah. It's still thin. So it's this is kind of like a layer consistency on the thin side. And then the last level is basically uh, almost undiluted. So covering uh, yeah. in, in one go. So, And the white is uh, straight out of the... the Pot or the tube. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there we already kind of shocked you with a lot of uh, knowledge in a few minutes, but I think it's important if, if you don't know uh, some of these basic techniques that, that we're talking about and you never heard of, of loaded brush. Um, And if you've never tried non-metallic metal before, um, the key here is a very strong contrast. Uh, everything that's metal should be of very strong contrast, and you can actually see this on the top part, how the, maybe uh, Ben can also point this out, the left yeah. side goes to white and the right side almost looks a little blackish. Yeah, one second, sure. Let me just sort that out here a bit. All right, so, yeah, Michael just mentioned it. It's quite important um, to have that strong uh, light and dark contrast, um, especially in on edges that meet here in the middle. Mm. Uh, we want to try and force the contrast really uh, strongly. So here I um, just took some of the uh, very dark color on the end of the gradient of my, on my palette and went here to that side just as light as the mid-tone here mm -hmm. and here I pushed it to white yeah mm, and we will try and continue the uh, same line here in the middle with a lot of contrast and more light up here than down there yeah and you can already see this looks like almost like a gold color and that's exactly what we're trying to do all right all right um, and a little darker already down here. It also looks like you're sparing some of the black in some areas, like in the recesses. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just keeping the black on the lower side of the elements and using it already kind of a dark lining to get a nice separation between the the different levels of height. Mm -hmm. That was a little too bright or too too much white. Just correct that with uh, 
with the middle tongue. All right, so uh, I already like quite like the level of contrast on there. Yeah, me too. Um, so we'll just continue like that on the lower piece here. You can actually see how the color that actually lands on the miniature changes once the white on the tip is gone. See that? And um, again, this is, guys, if you try this on your own, you might be a little frustrated at the beginning. Uh, it, it will require practice. Um, but if you can imagine that you can make a blending in one brush stroke, I think it's worth the try. <laughs> well, actually, like, like Yoda says, there's no try, but <laughs> it's really worth doing that. Yeah, uh, I can just agree because um, it's, a, it's a really nice, uh, nice technique to uh, paint very fast, even even like small and fine detailed miniatures like that. Um, sometimes is it if it turns out not... Um, not clean enough you can always go back and correct things with glazes or as I'm doing now just placing the colors a bit stronger in, in a pure form mm -hmm. um, but yeah and uh, we always tell the people on the on the workshop it takes you at least 10 hours to to get used to to a new technique like that yeah and again I think um, very important part and we'll see this on other parts as well uh, that are a little larger than these uh, uh, intricate details uh, depends on the surface size as well because the, the, the color on the tip of the brush is basically always depending on the on the size of the highlight you want to paint and of yeah. course right now we're doing extremely small ones in this uh, very filigree area but um, like on the on the coat for example on the legs you'll see uh, that differently and I can also tell you that Ben doesn't always hit it right the first time I would say probably does that right 95 out of 100 times but uh, that's probably because he's got years of experience with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, uh, I'm not doing the loaded brush for that long, so... Yeah, I was just, I was actually, I was just asking you, I wanted to ask you, because you haven't really done this that long, have you? Yeah, I think... When did you pick that up? Maybe two years ago, one year ago. Yeah. Something in between that. I used to do it, but not in such a controlled way. I, I used to just work with a more or less dirty brush and like the effect of that in, in wet blending. But yeah, then I then I tried to uh, kind of get my hand on controlling the technique better. I just want to um, kind of point out because you will again see this uh, throughout the video. I just give some some uh, kind of information early on. Uh, the first thing is that sometimes uh, Ben will say, and then I'm using a clean brush, uh, or just with a clean brush, something like that. And that basically means exactly that. He kind of cleaned the brush completely, um, either with water or, and that is the second thing I want to mention, um, Ben sometimes is very hungry and licks the brush. <laughs> and uh, as I always say, it's nothing we recommend, something that uh, we can't stop him doing. If we tried everything, we covered his mouth, but then he couldn't talk, so... <laughs> no, seriously, these, these paints are uh, harmless, um, or mostly harmless, I guess. But um, um, if you don't know what kind of paints you have, uh, you might not want to put these in your mouth. So, do as we say, don't do as Ben does. Yeah, I try to, to avoid that as much as I can. It's gotten much better, actually, I've, I've noticed that. I think it's just a habit, isn't it? And, yeah, well, and also sometimes you have to be fast, right? Because yeah, yeah. If you have to be fast, uh, I think it it just happened because I wanted to be faster, and it's just uh, an easy, fast way to clean the brush and control the humidity, actually in the in one go. Yeah. And then there's some paints where we don't have to tell you to not lick them, like Tamiya paints, oil colors. You will do this once and then you probably not do it again. They just don't taste right. <laughs> Thank you. 
area up up there uh, where I want the highlight actually to be uh, up here. It's too small to actually do a a loader brush. Mm -hmm. um, so I will just mix a color on the palette, a very light uh, yellow, and just use that for for the areas up here. And there are some artists that uh, say never use white as a final highlight. Um, no, we don't belong to that group. <laughs> um, the point is um, that there is a point, I guess. Um, if you use white highlights, they should be very, very, very limited. And uh, you'll, we'll have actually some other examples later, I know, uh, where Ben will show you what, what that means. Um, so the controlling the highlights is something that's, that's really important. Okay, I just um, put a little black color in the very recess here. Mm -hmm. um, can you say something about your brush and the size you're using right now? Um, yeah, this is a uh, zero from uh, the Winsor Newton series seven. Series seven. Long hair. Long hair. Mm -hmm. I prefer the long hair um, because they uh, have a bigger reservoir and store more paint or water in there. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, do also longer blendings with the, br with the brush. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes for uh, freehands, I use uh, also the miniature series with uh, shorter bristles. Um, but yeah, my favorite ones are, are the sevens. Mm -hmm. And now this is a very, very small and detailed miniature and you're using a zero which probably is going to be the largest brush most of the people out there have in their arsenal and they never use. Um, it's a very big misconception that um, for a miniature you need a small brush. I know people that have like 10 zeros and 5 zeros and 3, three zeros. Um, I don't think we've ever used a 3 zero in any of our videos. I, I can't remember if we did. No, I don't think so actually because I really rarely use a, a 3 zero. Yeah. Um, the most important thing uh, for for a good brush for me is the quality of the tip of the brush yeah so and the, actually that is why i love the winsor newton so much is just because they have a almost perfect tip most of them yeah um and you can have bad luck and buy one that is not 100 percent perfect but um still i mean i painted several figures with uh, this brush here and the tip is still so fine that i can just paint all these little details with the zero. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, these brushes are what about probably twice as expensive than than the other brands. And there's there's other there's the the Raphaels, uh, which we don't have here, but uh, we hear that they are very very good. Um, but I th I'd say those two brands is kind of the ones we almost exclusively recommend for having a good tip. Um, if your tip starts bending, uh, or even worse, splitting, uh, that is a sign of not the best quality brush. It actually can happen, we just had this happen with the Winston Newton brush as well, just after like half an hour, an hour, it started splitting in the middle and you had like two tips, uh, which is uh, only convenient if you want to paint two eyes at the same time and they're very <laughs> close to each other. Or uh, <laughs> fur on horses, but... <laughs> <laughs> But um, um, so that's why we also recommend to actually go to a store and look at the brushes. Yeah, you can actually see if there's a, if they are already splitting or not. And these will last you for a long, long time if you if you treat them right. Actually, I noticed that I start really enjoying this video because it's not for the academy, and we we get to kind of do a summary of everything we've kind of done in, in many of the other videos. Of course, we go into much more detail um, in some of these videos, but I think it's a, it's a good starting point. All right. Yeah, so, so you increase the contrast there, and um, there's going to be a very, very strong contrast uh, with the sash once that's painted. Yeah, I think that that would be very nice because you have the light metal here, the light metal there, dark metal, and then the highlights on the sash here. Yeah. Is it going to be purple or red? <laughs> yeah, I think somewhat purple. Why did I ask this question, Ben? I 
dann ist es so. Das ist das Konzept. Okay, das ist true as well. No, of course, it has a, um, um, we are talking a lot about contrast in our videos. Um, and contrast is not just um, light versus shadows. Uh, that is a very important contrast. But actually, there's a whole, whole uh, barrage of different contrasts that you can have. And um, here we are talking about a color contrast. And then if you have yellow, um, one of the strongest contrasts you can get is kind of in the purplish area. Yep, sure. Okay. So yeah, I think it uh, looks qu quite nice already. Yeah, it does. Um, and I think it's it's quite amazing because it's just uh, three colors and uh, it looks already kind of rich. Um, we'll add just a tiny bit of uh, tank brown from the Model, um, model Air range mm -hmm. um, to bring a little bit uh, warmth into the shadow area. Mm -hmm. Are you going to glaze those on? Or? Yeah. Um, I'm not mixing it in the with the initial um, Japanese uniform because uh, that would obscure the yellow quite too much. Mm. Maybe you can show this on your uh, fingernail again as well in a moment. Yeah. See how thin that is. And still, the impact will be quite noticeable. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, one of the reasons. And uh, again, guys, I'm going to try to give a lot of background because I, I do know that not everyone is a kind of showcase miniature painter here. Um, that brown has a lot of red uh, in it, um, and that yellow has a lot of green in it. So, red and green are kind of contrasting colors. Um, and when you kind of add them together, um, it uh, a process starts which we call desaturation, where um, basically the, it's going to gray down and get much darker. And that's why even that thin glaze uh, has a lot of impact. And we'll pull it a little bit more up here in the, in the darker side of the carapace. Dark side of the boot. I really like that. Also, the um, the tank brown is a little bit uh, satin, yeah, and it adds a nice uh, little tiny bit of gloss in the in the shadows. Yeah, and that's another form of contrast: matte versus satin versus gloss. Nice. I really like it. It's really cool. So what's next? Do we have more metal parts, by the way? Yes, we have quite some metal parts. Yeah, no, I mean from the from the from armor. the uh, armor part in the middle, no. But uh, I think we will uh, continue with the other uh, metal parts, mm -hmm. as we have the uh, the colors on the palette, and it's nice to keep them uh, in more or less uh, one look. Yeah, but um, so um, just to have a, a little bit difference here, we'll start with the. Uh, with the um, steel metal part, the blade. Um, I will mix that from black from model color and um, turquoise, also model color. A little bit of the white. And then silver non metallic metal, it's always good to have a little bluish tint to it. Um, turquoise, uh, maybe an ice blue if you still have that, if you still have color or light blue. Um, otherwise, it looks a little bit more like stone than metal. Okay, just one side, um, blue, quite simple. Let that dry. Um, add some white to the tip of the brush. And uh, I think this will be a good chance to see uh, the, the loaded brush uh, just with the side of the brush. Yeah. So we will place the white here. Uh, 
and pull it with the lower side of the brush. So place it, place it and pull it. And even repeat that with a little bit more white. Mm -hmm. And there's more to the lower brush than just putting paint in the tip. As you can see here, uh, Ben actually move, um, stops painting with the absolute tip. Uh, and well, actually, in the last last time he did it, uh, uh, and then moves down with the side like he's doing now. And this way, you can really control your blending. And since the, the paint is wet the whole time, um, it's called wet and wet blending as well, uh, Ben can correct exactly where he wants to do it. And you know, if you want to do this with uh, the normal kind of glazing technique, um, it's not going to take three seconds, it's going to take longer. Okay, and just with a bit of the medium tone, do you need to soft it out? And I want another highlight down here. Not as bright as the one on the top, so I'm placing the mid-tone and using some of the original color here. And this was a classic case of, of wet and wet. Yeah, both well, colors still wet and just mix it on the surface of the miniature. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Very easy, very simple, very effective. Yep. Ruthlessly efficient. So, um, for the next highlight, if we will place that here. Uh, we will have to work in both directions. A little hard to get to now on the, on the camera. Yeah. Now, if Ben were at home, this would probably not be the position he chooses <laughs> to get this part. And uh, with just a clean brush and some white on the tip, uh, we will try to get a very sharp line here to the front. And just to repeat that clean brush and a white tip. So basically, this is also a loaded brush technique, just with water in the back. Um, and uh, this basically creates an effect that we also call feathering where you take the paint and um, you kind of dilute it out with water so it uh, um, creates a very smooth transition. All right, uh, I will darken it a little here to the front, to the tip. Yeah, but as you guys have the, the miniature in your hand, you know how small that actually is. And just push the contrast and move it around um, to the point where you're happy with it. Yeah. 
So as uh, Ben already starts doing the, the backside now, uh, one of the things uh, we always do in our videos is uh, we, we don't try to bore you. Um, so if a miniature has two legs and we've uh, shown you one leg, uh, then the second one we usually do off cam um, because um, you don't have to say, see the same thing twice. Uh, or if it's a spider creature with six legs, you don't have to see all six. <laughs> so um, we will come back when the sword is done and uh, move on to the next part. All right.